since making that amazing second half debut in 2017. <laughs> Reese Hoskins has steadily regressed pretty much since then. Yeah, he had two hits last night, but he freaks he frequently looks lost a bit at the plate. What's going on with him, Chris? Yeah, I'm really disappointed with him and Kangaroo because it looked like, uh, you know, the Phillies had maybe produced a couple of kids out of their minor league system that were going to be everyday big league players and contribute. And um, they're both going the other way. Uh, you know, it started with the, with last year. You know, and Hoskins was unbelievable at the beginning of the year and then struggled. And then now Kingery's in a funk from, you know, last year he came on a little bit. Now he's in a funk the whole season. Uh, for me to tell you what's wrong with him, I have no idea other than the game is the most humbling game ever created and it gets between your ears and sometimes you can't get out of it. I, I've always said the easiest thing in baseball is to watch a player uh, when they're going well and to see how they react and all that. What you really want to know is when they go bad because you're going to go bad in the game, how do you get out of it? Uh, and how do you change your approach so you're able to get out of it? And, uh, to me, the, both of them look like they're off balance when they're hitting. And there's so much of this launch stuff anymore, you know, where guys are trying to hit home runs and, and uh, you know, hit the ball in the air and all that sort of stuff. And Hoskins now, all of a sudden, they're all playing three infielders over on the left side. When he first came up, he could drive the ball to right and right center. He doesn't do that anymore. So those are the two things. They're, they're both very, very disappointing. Uh, I don't think Kingery's playing tonight. I think they're going to start Phil Gosselin against LeBlanc, who's a left-hander. Maybe let him sit around and watch for a while. But, you know, you can't stay with a guy as long this year because you guys just brought up how much of the season's gone already. Yeah, you know, Wheels, we were talking about this last night in the ninth inning when, when Hoskins is at the plate. You know, it was kind of a simple philosophy, I guess, as we were coaching, when I was coaching high school baseball, when a kid was struggling a little bit, was that act like you have a camera on your front shoulder and you want to keep it straight to the pitcher. Um, mm. He got a pitch. Instead of taking the, the pitch where the where it was and driving it the other way, he tries to yank a ball that's above his yep. waist the other direction. He'll never be successful swinging like that. Now you're going to roll over a lot of stuff, too, and that's what happens. Uh, Left-handed mm. hitters, right-handed hitters. Um, and you guys and, and the listeners know what I mean when you roll over something. And if you can somehow – and a lot of that comes – from the fact that you're not confident in your ability to, to let the ball, they call it deep in the zones, deep in the strike zone. Uh, that's something that's been forever. When a hitter's hitting well, the ball looks really big. They see the spin right away. They can wait. And then if the ball pitches away, they can, put it the, they can hit it hard the other way. The pitch is middle in or, or up or all those kind of things that they like, and they can pull the ball. But if you're, if you're struggling and you're, you're jumping at everything and you're antsy up there like those two appear to be, you're going to see a lot of swings and misses and guys rolling stuff over. And that's what you see from both of them. Hmm. All right, Wheels, we put it off long enough. Uh, the pitching, <laughs> specifically the bullpen. Wheels, I cannot <laughs> tell you how much I cringe when some of these relievers come in. Trevor Kelly and Nick Pavetta have been sent packing. Thank you. Uh, but Austin Davis doesn't belong in the big leagues. Cole Irvin stinks. Tommy Hunter has been awful so far this year. <laughs> Blake Parker is back. whoop de frickin' do. I can't take it anymore, Wheels. Help me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't. <laughs> I, I, you, you laid it out in terms that I probably wouldn't have used at one time. But, uh, yeah, that was um, that was very accurate. That was very accurate, Chad. Uh, it, it's a mess. And, you know, you're in a day and age of bullpens where guys come in and throw BBs and get a lot. One of the problems with the game now is that um, later in the game, they bring in all these guys, you get all these swings and misses, and nothing happens. And that's one of the reasons why people say, well, we've got to get more offense and get it. Well, with all those swings and misses, you don't. Well, not many people swing and miss at these guys, hmm. if you notice. Oh, yeah, uh, they, they put it in play and I don't know about this launch angle and velocity and all that, but I know what it sounds like when they hit a ball hard. That's what we used to go off. And, um, they, they just, they just, you know, I got guys with these little short arm sidearm study, all trying to fake, you know, to use some deception to get people out. And, and uh, <laughs> it's not their fault. It's not their fault if they can't succeed in the major leagues because they're not equipped to pitch in the major leagues. Now, is that a shortcoming right now that uh, they took a chance on that maybe they'd have more and maybe some of them got hurt, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, probably. But no, people don't want to hear that. They want to know why can't Joe bring somebody in 
they can get somebody out. And, you know, Naris is one of those guys that can do it some nights, and then, like a lot of closers, other nights he can't. And last night he sort of did it. And if they catch the pop-up, you know, you, you live to play another inning. So uh, it's awful. And you're not the only one where you go, oh, no. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. uh, uh, you, you just feel you just feel something bad's coming when the, when that gate opens. Yeah. Hey, and, Wheels, you know, uh, Matt Clintac taking a lot of heat in town. Uh, Joe Girardi so far getting a little bit of a pass. I, I have some questions about Girardi's pinch hitting uh, lefty righty in the third inning. I, I, that was Kapler esque. Uh, so I, I guess uh, it seems to be a little bit of blame to go around everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we give Joe Girardi a little extra um, uh, uh, leeway because he's been such a really good major league manager for a long time and he's learning his players and trying to do some things and you do have to do some things a little quicker maybe now than you want to and you guys laid it all out because of uh, the urgency in the season um matchups are very important they always have been nowadays they really have matchups uh and all that computerized stuff and all the locations and all the stuff that people can hit and they can hit and they get in a situation where maybe you think you can win the game right now um, even though it's early in the ball game. So I don't quite remember that situation uh, that you're talking about, but I can understand sometimes when you make a move, uh, if a certain pitcher comes in off a certain guy forever, there have been mismatches in the game. And we used to know them when I was doing the games, they used to think, oh, this is not good. This is not a good matchup right now for the Phillies one way or the other. And I'm sure they have all those matchups in there. And there's there's a lot of thought that goes into it. They just don't do it out of the, you know, pull it out of the blue. Well, Wills, the starting pitching has been noticeably better than the bullpen, which isn't saying a whole lot, I guess. Um, but Aaron Nola has been terrific his last couple of starts. Jake Arietta had maybe his best start as a fill last Saturday. And your nephew, Zach Wheeler, is doing fine, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I know he's not related to you. You okay with the rotation? Yeah, Zach Wheeler, I, you know, the spring training was so quick this year. I met him early in spring training when I'm going to introduce myself and I told him what my name was, and he laughed. And I said, I just want you to know if people are yelling wheels sometimes, it may not be about you. <laughs> he hey, he laughed. He said, yeah. He said, I heard about you. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, let me interrupt you. Speaking of, speaking of spring training, uh, Bill and I were both down there the week of March yeah. 9th and 10th, and we were all set to go to the game on March 13th to say hello to you. And, of course, on the 12th, yep. all hell broke loose, and they canceled everything. Yep. So uh, we didn't get to see you. Uh, I remember when you told me, you know, we we're going to catch up before a game because I'm still hanging around there doing the PA and that yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah, that was, uh, you know, the whole the whole situation is bigger than all of us, certainly bigger than baseball. And there was something they had to do at the time. But it was very unfortunate uh, to have to yeah. shut it down. Uh, they were playing pretty well at the time for spring training. You know, you don't put a whole lot into that. But there are some really big games coming up with crowds, so like St. Patty's Day and all some of the other yeah. things that they do so well with. Um, yeah, it hurt. It really did hurt. And uh, at the time, you thought, well, maybe we'll get started by May or something like that. And, you know, who would believe how bad it's been? Hey, I just have to throw back to the bullpen for just a second. I had to throw some couple <laughs> stats out here just for the record, Chet. So yeah. in case we have to go back and chase these stats at another time, <laughs> how about a 10.66 ERA when leading? Mm. When leading, okay, 15 earned runs, 23 hits, and five home runs in 12.2 innings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what are they? Five and seven, and they could easily be seven and five. Uh, no, no, a no-brainer seven and five. If some of that stuff, if some of those numbers weren't there. Yeah. Well, the, the interesting thing is the Braves have the leading bullpen at point five six, while the Phils are at ten point six six. And that's not good. <laughs> no, no. I don't, know what, I, I don't know what I could add to that. Well, speaking right. of uh, pitching wheels, uh, you can guess how I feel these days about Vince Velasquez. Is it time we put him out to pasture and just go with the rookie Spencer Howard? Well, I struggle watching him too. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it, it's not that you don't have a sample. Sometimes that's my point. Sometimes you have to be careful when you don't have a sample size on a player and you make a, a snap judgment on a guy because you really need to see somebody go through a season or two and, those kind of things. But in this guy's case, I think we've all seen enough of him. 
um, obviously they haven't, they've decided that, uh, um, they decided that he can still contribute, but uh, you know, you have a new manager now who has, uh, has his own feelings. He has no stake in the game as far as how they got Vince Velasquez to the, to the big leagues and what his reputation was. And he struck out whatever in 16 that one day or whatever it was. So I think, um, let me put it this way. Sometimes you'll find it when somebody comes in with a clean slate, uh, they're going to have a tendency to have a shorter leash for a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Wills, I wanted to ask you about Bryce Harper. Um, th- to me, he is way better than I thought he was. I mean, I knew he was a great player down in Washington. Uh, I like everything he says. I like every way he acts. Uh, and I love the way he plays hard every day. This kid is only still only 27 years old. feels like he's been in the big leagues for 15 years. Uh, I, I think once we get back to regular baseball, uh, watching him over the next five years is going to be a lot of fun. Has a chance to be a lot of fun. Amen to that. I, you know, I, I get a kick out of sometimes. Well, he's, he's supposed to do – what do you want him to do? Hit, hit 800, you know, because he's right. making that kind of money. You, you know, he can only do so much in the game. The game's really hard. And uh, the thing that – his offense has been about what it was supposed to be. The thing that's really impressed me, and I saw him play a lot back in the days when I was still doing games and broadcasting and then as the ambassador and being around and all that, um, his outfield plays outstanding. He yeah. really is playing really, really well in the outfield. He, he, you know, he was a, a strange kid in the outfield. He, he would just go so full bore. He was hurting himself early in his career and I think they probably, you know, try to back him down a little bit and say, you know, you're not an American Legion ball all now. You know, you can't go jumping through, uh, over fences and stuff like that to catch balls. And I think maybe he got in some bad habits. But boy, since he's come over here, he was good last year. And early on this year, he hits the cutoff, man. If he has to make a strong throw, he can make it. Um, he doesn't go sliding after balls that he can't catch, you know, that uh, – then he'll turn into into more extra base hit. You know, keep the ball in front of him. I, his offense is what it is. Um, he's going to knock in a lot of runs. He's going to walk a lot. He's going to hit a lot of home runs. He's going to strike out a lot. But his defense, to me, has been something that I didn't expect it to be as good as it is. Yep, very impressive. Hey, I have one more thing for you, Wheels, uh, and for you too, Bill. I've made a major shift in policy this year. I was actually leaning this way back in the spring, and now I can confirm it. After long being opposed to the designated hitter, I've now had a change of heart. I'm okay with both leagues going with the DH permanently. Are you with me, Wheels? Well, I got to be because it's going to happen. Uh, I don't think there's any – any. Uh, look, I love the game the way that it was. I loved when I was a broadcaster because, you know, you could do more strategy. You could set things up. Uh, you, you could go down your lineup card and see this move for this move, this move, and this move. Uh, now you don't have the strategy that you had before. And I always thought, well, I'll miss that. And I still, I think I'll still miss it. But then you get, you know, it, 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 to me, you just, you have to roll with the punches. It's the inevitability of this is what's going to happen right now. They use it all over the minor leagues. Everybody's used to it coming up to the major leagues now. Uh, pitchers don't bunt anymore in the minor leagues. You don't want to bunt up here anyway. They're afraid of them getting hit by a pitch because they don't know <laughs> how to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, they're not used to it. So, you know, they can't get a bunt down anyway. So why even worry about having the the pitcher up there, you know, trying to do those kind of things. So, yeah, I think when the new uh, – this is going to be one of those things that they're experimenting with this year, that when the new bargaining, uh, collective bargaining, is, is – uh, they get through it next year, I think both the union and the uh, – and management will decide they're going to keep the DH. I agree. 